this lecture, we have a short note on polymers. Plastics are polymers, but there are many natural polymers such as silk, collagen, amber, latex rubber, cotton, wool, tortoise shell, and lignin found in woody plants, or cellulose in munchy greens, or glycogen made from glucose in the liver and muscles, and starch also made from glucose in plants. Uh, typically, we don't think of um, the glycogen that we find in muscles, which is the way the body stores energy as a, as a polymer, but it is in fact a polymer. It's a polymer of glucose. Our body li links the glucose molecules together uh, to form uh, a, storage, a stored form of energy, and it's e readily available when the muscles need it. Um, when the plants make storage forms of glucose, they typically make starch, and some plants also will make cellulose. Both starch and cellulose are made of glucose, just the type of linkages are different. And um, in the case of starch, we can digest it because we have the enzymes in our metabolism that will break down the linkages. But in the case of cellulose, our body lacks the enzymes to digest cellulose, so it remains um, a form of bulk. Maybe a, a ruminant animals can digest it, Things, uh, animals like horses or zebras and any large bellied animal will be will have the enzymes to digest cellulose because it'll, the cellulose can be broken down into sugar. But for human beings, we, we can't. In order, we get no calories from cellulose, so we can eat celery. It has no nutritive value in terms of sugar. Um, glycogen made from glucose in the liver and muscles. And starch also made from glucose in plants. So they're, all, they're all polymers, meaning they are molecules that are long uh, chains, or sometimes they're continuous, uh, single chain, but they're made by linking together repeating units of the same small molecule, which brings us to the first definition, which is a monomer. A monomer, a monomer is a molecule of low mass that links with other similar molecules to form long chains called polymers. And the polymer is a large molecule made of repeating units called monomers. The polymerization is the process of linking monomer units into a polymer. So when we make a plastic, usually it's by polymerizing monomer. For example, if you make dentures, uh, you use methyl methacrylate, that's the, mono, uh, the monomer, and methyl methacrylate is reacted to form the pink colored plastic. Of course, methyl methacrylate is colorless. They add some pigment to it to make the uh, plastic look flesh colored, um, but it forms a strong plastic that can hold art also the artificial teeth to make a denture. Addition polymers are those kind of pol polymers formed by addition reactions. All the atoms end up in the polymer. And I have several examples of addition reactions here of common plastics that are used in the food industry and in making everyday household items. We have, for example, polyethylene, uh, very, very often symbolized as PET. And it's made of, I've used bond line notation to depict the monomers, two carbon atoms. There's a hydrogen atom at each uh, corner there. And this, the arrow here shows the movement of electrons so that if you have four or let's say five ethylene molecules, they can be linked by opening up that, that electron. Those two electrons can swing down and connect the two atoms so that at the end you have um, a long chain molecule. Now what I'm showing here is not exactly what happens, but in, in the net reaction, that's what happens. You have electrons now linking two carbon atoms. And if the reaction is repeated for a long chain, you get a long molecule we call polyethylene. Polyethylene can be used to make bottles. Um, propylene can be used to make rope. But they're all plastics that are familiar to us. The difference between uh, polyethylene and polypropylene is in the monomer. This is an ethene molecule. This is a propylene molecule two carbon bonds double bonded with a methyl group on them. If you link all those together, they mix a long chain with a methyl group for every second carbon atom. If you take the vinyl monomer, which is an ethylene with a chlorine on the first position, uh, you get polyvinyl chloride, which is called PVC. PVC is used for pipe. It's pretty durable. It doesn't react very, uh, readily with solvents, or most solvents and it's uh, also somewhat fire resistant. Polystyrene is an ethylene monomer with a phenyl group on it, and when you link them together, again, it's always the same type of reaction, where you have 
two electrons that were formerly between the carbon atoms are now linking the two carbon atoms adjacent to them, and it forms a long chain called the styrene, which is this one. And this is a very popular molecule too, polytetrafluoroethylene. The fluorine atoms help uh, produce a molecule that is resistant to heat and also very slippery, so things don't stick to it. Uh, there was a commercial on a few years ago on TV where they talked about PTFE resins being used in um, car engines. And the, the premise was that by coating the engine of the car um, with cylinders and the, and the pistons with this resin, it would produce a very slick surface so that when the car starts up and there's no oil in the engine, it would, it would give some protection until the oil has ten, a chance to flow. And PTFE is uh, short for polytetrafluoroethylene, which we also call Teflon, which is, I think, a trade name. But they put it on frying pans, for example, to keep the uh, food from sticking to the metal. And it's also produced the same type of reaction. We have the ethylene monomer, and the ethylene monomer swings over, and it forms a link between adjacent monomers so that you get a long chain. So the polymers all form in the same, same type of reaction, um, but they form um, polymers of, with different properties. Some of them are heat resistant, some of them are flexible, and so on. 